Hello, and welcome to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tanya J. Laird. In this video, we'll be continuing our look at uh, finding beam deflection by the method of virtual work. In particular, we'll be looking at uh, how to handle uh, finding deflections when you're working with a beam with some sort of discontinuity in the uh, load or moment functions in the beam. So we'll be working through a uh, an example of moderate complexity, just a simply supported beam with the point load at the center, seeing how to find both our real and virtual uh, moment functions, and applying our integration to find the overall um, uh, the overall deflection in the beam. And this will also be an example that we incorporate some numbers into the system rather than just working through things in terms of uh, variables such as e and i. All right, so. Now, our governing equation, again, for our, uh, our equation for the virtual work of the deflection of beams, and we'll also see uh, some with frames, is going to be, well, we have uh, Q delta P is equal to uh, the summation of any integrals uh, from x equals 0 to x equals L of mq mp dx over ei. All right, so that is our governing equation. And what I wanted to talk about today is when we use the summation. When is it necessary to use this, the summation here? And maybe look at a simple example of uh, where a, a relatively brief example of where we might apply that. So um, again, let's look at the terms here. Q again is our uh, virtual system. And P is the real system. So um, let's say for example, we had, uh, so, and again, we have MQ, which is the uh, which is the, f the uh, moment function caused by the virtual load, and P is the moment function caused by the real load. Um, uh, as a function of x across the beam, Q is our, um, is our real load, like for example, a one kip real load, or sorry, Q is our virtual load, for example, a one kip virtual load, and delta P is the uh, actual deflection the real beam will undergo um, uh, as we balance virtual and real work. Okay, so let's say we had, uh, so last time we looked at a beam like this, we had just a, oh, a simply supported beam. And we had a simply supported beam with a uniform load. And because of this, there were no internal discontinuities, so we didn't need to use the summation term at all. So let's say we had something different though. Um, let's imagine for a moment we have something like this. Let's say we have a, so I guess last time we had a, this cantilever beam, this fixed beam with a uniform load across. Now, uh, let's say we have a, oh, a uh, simply supported beam with a point load at the center. Say a, let's say we have a 10 kip point load. Oh, and then let's make this, hmm. Oh, 20 feet and 20 feet. And let's say this has an E, an elastic modulus of 29,000 PSI. So for steel, and then I, oh, what should I be? Um, in fact, I might even steal one from the problem two here. You know, why not? I'll just use the same I from problem two, uh, 1200 inches to the fourth. Uh, I'll just steal this from problem two of our homework. But uh, anyway, um, although that beam, and actually that beam length was 20 feet as well, so, well, this is actually twice the length, so maybe I'll go ahead and bump this up to say, oh, I don't know, let's make this uh, 6,000. I thought it might be neat to do an example of some numbers instead of just the generic EI. So, um, we need to uh, apply the integral here. We need to apply an integral here. And the tricky thing is that we're going to, that we need uh, functions 
uh, that can be integrated across x equals 0 to l. In other words, the entire length of the beam. However, that's not necessarily going to be possible because let's consider our real and our virtual system. Our real system is the real beam with its actual load. So we have a 10 kip load and a, uh, let's see, so this is going to be by balance, just by simple symmetry. This should be 5 kips and 5 kips. And then our, then we'll have a shear function. Well, the shear plot would look like this, dropping down like this, and our moment function, so let's see, this would be a positive 5 and negative 5, and our moment function, let's see, this would be, our moment function would be, well, this is going to be just by simple area, this is 20 feet and 20 feet. So this would come up to 100 and then down again. So 100 kip feet. All right, so no great surprises there. And then, so, and again, this is our P, our, our, our uh, real system. And then we have a virtual system. So uh, let's say, for example, I uh, wanted to know the deflection at mid-span. Find deflection at midspan. So, uh, and again, just like we did last time, when we want to find a, the deflection at some location, we are going to apply a one kip virtual load or a one kip dummy load at the location that we want to find the deflection. So, therefore, our virtual system will be the exact same beam, um, in other words, the exact same length the exact same elastic modulus, the exact same moment of inertia. However, it will have just a one kip load applied at the center because that's where we're interested in finding the deflection. Um, so let's see what our shear would look like. Well, in terms of loads, I would have a, a 0 0.5 kip load here, or is that in terms of deflections? In terms of reactions, I would have a 0 0.5 kip uh, vertical force at each at each support. So therefore our shear would be very similar to the other one because they're both point loads uh, at the center. So we have 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5. And then moment, uh, let's see, so this is 20 feet and 20 feet. So by simple area methods, this would come up to 10 like this and like this. So for a total of uh, 10 kip feet. Okay, so the shear and moment diagrams are fairly easy to get. However, um, if I actually want to apply this formula, I'm going to need um, shear and moment functions, not just shear and moment diagrams. We can get the shear and moment um, function uh, diagrams just by simple area inspection methods, but, by, but if we want to actually integrate, we're going to need to get the functions, which won't be too bad, really. So let's develop these moment functions. So let's develop these functions. Um, and the nice thing is about this, because I did uh, design the system so that it has um, so the nice thing is because I have this 10 kip load right at the center and I'm asking for the deflection at the center, all I really have to do is get the uh, moment function for the, uh, say, the uh, virtual system. And then if I want the function for the real system, again, in this problem, because I, I'm looking for at the, because I have this, uh, um, basically because the, if we look at the uh, real system here and the virtual system, it can be seen that these are direct multiples of one another. So if I if I get the moment function for the uh, uh, for the virtual system, all I have to do is multiply by everything by ten, and I'll have the moment function for the real system. Now you, we can only do that in this case because the uh, point load uh, and the location where we want the deflection is at the same location, and that's why we put the one kip dummy load there. But in this case, that does make the problem a little bit simpler. Okay. 
So let's try to develop a moment function. And I'm going to do, I am going to develop the uh, Q function first. Again, this is our virtual system Q. And I'm going to try to develop that one first, and then just multiply by 10 to get our moment function for our real system. So MQ, let's think about this. Well, uh, so I know that shear is the, I know that shear is the uh, slope of moment. So therefore, and I know that, and I can see that that moment uh, is going to be a linear function. So uh, that means that we're going to have a, a, sl a moment function with a slope of 0 0.5 and then just times x um, when x is between uh, 0 feet and 20 feet. And I can check this. If I put 0 in for x, I get a moment of 0. If I put 20 in for x, I get a moment of 10. So uh, no great surprises there. And then for the second region, I can just do a little, uh, you know, I can think back to basic algebra and just say, okay, well, or I can do it like this. I can say my moment function MQ for the second region, well, the slope of this is going to be negative 0.5. Uh, negative 0.5x, and I'll need to figure out some sort of um, boundary condition, some sort of constant of integration. And I need to figure out this constant of integration, or just some constant value, or the uh, y-intercept we could think of it as. And I can just say for a boundary condition that uh, m at x equals 40 is going to be equal to 0. And that's mq there. So I can then just say 40 or 0 equals negative 0 0.5 times uh, 40 plus C, and C is then just going to be equal to 20. So uh, therefore, my MQ function is uh, negative 0 0.5x plus 20 when x is between 40 feet and 20 feet, like so. And again, it's probably good to check these values. If I put in a 20, let's see. If I put in 20 for x, I will get a negative 10 plus 20 is a 10, which is what I would expect. And then if I put in a 40 for x, the left, the, the uh, rightmost extreme coordinate of the beam, I get that I have a uh, 40 times negative 0.5 is negative 20 plus 20 is zero. And so we end up with a, um, with zero as we should at that end of the beam. Okay, so, uh, and you know, I so I developed this through uh, sort of just developing the, uh, the method I used to develop these moment functions was just based on sort of inspection and then turning those into functions. However, we could have uh, just as easily developed them by uh, integration from the, uh, from the uh, load function, the load function would be zero, and I would then just need to apply per appropriate boundary conditions. But in this case, because the uh, load is such a simple function, this is actually, I think, a little bit easier to work through by inspection than by integration. Okay. So, um, again, we have a real system and our virtual system. And uh, we now have our full moment function for our uh, virtual beam. And I want to get the, uh, I next want to get the moment function for the real beam. And uh, thankfully, because these are just simple multiples of each other, in this case, it's going to be fairly straightforward, or actually not, not, not even just fairly straightforward, it's going to be downright trivial to get the moment function um, for the real system. Okay, so again, uh, we have our function for our virtual systems. So let's go ahead and just multiply everything here. Well, not everything, just all of the uh, moments. We don't want to multiply our x coordinates by uh, 10, but all of our uh, moment, but the moment function q, uh, p is simply going to be 10 times the moment function q. And again, that's because we can simply see here 
um, our real system and our virtual system are basically the same for this particular problem. That's not always the case, but in this particular problem, they're basically the same, except they differ by a factor of 10. So therefore MP is simply going to be equal to, uh, let's see, that is going to just be 5x when x is between 0 and 20. And uh, that will be negative 5x plus 200 when x is between 20 feet and 40 feet. Okay, so uh, no great surprise there. And when I put in, and I, and I can double check this by putting in 0 in for x, and I will indeed get 0. I can put in 20 in this first region, and I will get 100. If I put 20 in the second region, I'll get negative 100 plus 200, 100 as I would expect. And when I put in 40, I will get uh, negative 200 plus 200 is 0, which is exactly what I would expect from um, that moment function. So we now have the full uh, moment functions. We have our MQ and MP. So how do we handle the, um, how are we going to handle uh, calculating everything on this side of the equation? Well. This example again is where the uh, is where our uh, our uh, summation really comes into play, and we're going to need to integrate uh, this between two different regions. So, um, I'm for shorthand. I'm going to call this uh, these like I'm going to call this M Q one. This isn't in the text, but this is just my personal notation how I like, kind of like to do it and mq2, and I'm going to call this uh, mp1 and mp2. Okay, so our, uh, to set up this integral, I can say that q delta p is equal to, not the integral from 0 to l, but uh, one integral from 0 to 20 and another integral from 20 to 40. The integral from uh, x equals, um, and actually I'm going to put a 1 over ei in front of all this, I think. So I'll do a 1 over ei, that ei there times the integral from x equals uh, 0 to x equals 20 of uh, M P or mq1 of x, or mq1, mp1, dx, plus the integral uh, from 20 to 40 of mq2 mp2 dx. So this is where I'm going to use my summation. Um, it's not so much a summation of um, yeah, multiple different elements in this particular case. Like we, we don't have multiple beams and columns all being uh, disturbed by the same load. Rather, we have uh, different regions within the same uh, within the same uh, beam being disturbed. So. This illustrates how you use the summation. Here we have two different regions. Um, we have a discontinuity in the middle of our beam. So we need a summation to consider the two regions separately. So that's not going to be too bad, I don't think. I'll try to leave the uh, beam intact here, the beam diagram. So let's just go ahead and check through this integral and try to wrap up this problem. Okay, so uh, let's get the first integral here. The first integral and the first interval. So this first uh, integral will be from x equals 0 
2 x equals 20 feet, and we have a 0 0.5 x. Uh, 0 0.5x, let's see, uh, times uh, negative point, or not, not negative point 0.5, we're still in the first region, times 5x, like so, and dx. All right, so that would be the integral from x equals 0 to x equals 20 of, let's see, so that would be 25, but 2.5x squared. I believe, if I can math that correctly, uh, 2.5x squared, and then uh, dx. Let's see, take the integral of that. Uh, let's see, that would be, well, that is, uh, let's see, what is that going to be? That's going to be 2.5 over 3. Oh, the dangers of doing a problem live. Uh, you always can end up with some ugly numbers like that. Uh, x to the third. And that would be integrated from 0 to 20. And let me just go ahead and throw that into my calculator. I will get a value of, let's see, so 2.5 over 3. Um, and then um, times 20 to the third. And if I, oh, that's a lovely, uh, lovely uh, friendly number of, 6,666.67. And I guess units for that would be, let's see, that would be, uh, moment would be in kip feet. So kips, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna worry about the units. It's gonna be something, some ugly thing made of uh, kip squared and feet squared. Okay, I'll solve that by just, when I work through the final number, I'll just put my E in and I in terms of feet. Okay, just to be consistent to make the units work out. Then the next integral in the second region, let's see here. So multiplying these two together, and well, that's gonna be loads of fun. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and work through that to the side here. If I multiply the, well, maybe I can do it like this. The integral from uh, x equals 20 feet to x equals 40 feet, of mq2 times mp2. Uh, this is going to be negative 0.5x plus 20 times uh, negative 5x plus 200 uh, dx. And this is going to be a lovely integral. And I think for the sake of uh, speed, I will just uh, multiply this one out in my calculator. Negative, I think you know how to do integrals by this point. Uh, let's see, negative 5x plus 200. Uh, let's see, so we have that and there. And I will integrate this, comma x from 20 to 40. And if I integrated that correctly, I get, uh, let's see, um, let me just double check that, negative 0.5x plus 20, um, and negative uh, 50x plus 200, or 5x plus 200, helps if you enter it into your calculator correctly. And then integrate this, come x from 20 to 40. Oh, interestingly, and this is probably a good sign, I get the same number, 666.67. So even though, and that shouldn't surprise us, this is a symmetric beam. And in fact, I probably could have gotten away with just uh, um, integrating only half of it and then multiplying, but I did want to illustrate how this all works together. So we've got our, uh, we have our uh, combined thing here. And so now we can apply our overall integral. Uh, let me go ahead and erase this section here. And we'll need to calculate a new value of E and a new value of I uh, in order to use compatible unit systems. But we basically what I want to get at the end of this is I, w I do want to get an actual value for deflection uh, just in feet or inches. So do you wanna, I, I, I thought I wanted to work through a problem that actually had some, uh, some numbers on it.
All right. So uh, first of all, I want to get uh, so both of these uh, integrals will sum up to the same thing. Not great. Not uh, a big surprise there. E. Our elastic modulus is twenty nine thousand ksi. Um, but I want to convert this from kips per square inch uh, to kips per foot squared. So I'm going to multiply by 144. That's 12 squared. So 29,000 times uh, 144. And that is uh, 4,176,000. And our I... We have an I of 6,000 inches to the fourth. And I can convert that just by dividing by uh, 1 over 12 to the fourth um, to get that in feet to the fourth. So 6,000 uh, divided by 12 to the fourth. And oh, I want to do this in decimal. Uh, that is 0 0.289, like so. And so then I can just say, okay, well, my Q delta P is equal to 1 over EI, which is 1 over 4,176,000 uh, That's my 1 over EI uh, times that 0.289. And times the summation, which is just going to be twice the 6,666. And let's see, I'll just multiply that fairly quickly and we'll wrap up here. So this times 2 divided by this times that. And I get a, a Q delta P. And since Q is equal to just one kip, I can just say I, that Q will just go away, and I will say that delta P is equal to 0 0.011 feet, or multiply by 12, that would be uh, 0 0.13 inches um, downward. And assuming I made no math error, that is how we would apply this uh, formula. Again, we apply the summation when we have discontinuities within our uh, moment. Uh, either our uh, virtual or our real system, and also you'll need to apply this for any combinations of these. So if our, so, so for example, if I was looking for the deflection at this point here, uh, if I was looking for the deflection at this point here, I would have to apply three different regions. I would have one region from here to here, one from here to here, and from one to here to here, because you need to apply this across, you have to use the same coordinate system all the way across, and you need to consider any discontinuities as, uh, in either the mom in either the real or the virtual system as uh, points where you need to break up your integrals and sum up your energy by summation. Okay, so uh, any questions on this? I know th I went through that very quickly, um, trying to get through this example during class, but uh, hopefully you found this, uh, you could follow along to that. Any questions before we wrap up? All right, that'll do it for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Again, in this example, we just were or in this lecture, we just worked through a uh, example uh, exploring how to find uh, or how to apply the equations of virtual work to the uh, development of the deflection of a uh, of a beam that has some sort of discontinuity in the uh, load or uh, shear function, uh, load shear or moment function. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Hopefully I didn't make any math errors. All this was uh, performed live in front of a class uh, with numbers made up on the spot. So you never know. It can certainly happen. Hopefully there were no uh, mathematical foibles in there, although the method itself uh, in general is correct. So again, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to make the robots happy. I'll see you all soon in the next lecture. And as always, thank you.